mixes that flour with water, salt, and yeast. And that mixture rises. Or in other words, shows signs of new life. I thought that your gestures and voice were, were well done. I thought it was great because it's always important to try to incorporate humor to our speakers because it helps build a connection with the audience. Presentation, I've really never seen anything like that in my Toastmaster experience. A hands-on demonstration. Now, I hear you got a job in a bakery. Okay, so what are you doing there all day? Oh, I'm just loafing. So. Thank you, Robert, for allowing us to not only save money on teaching us where to buy things, Going over to the dark side, the dark side of the English language. And gave us a wonderful speech on the ins and outs of San Quentin Prison. <laughs> he did sound as though he really knew what he was talking about. I'm sure we all learned some. I maybe you didn't learn anything. Did you have anything to drink other than alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my car won't start. I need a lift. We have special autograph Hi, Founders District TV. This is Damien Fergoso from the Division D Evaluation and Humor Speech Contest. Thrilling contest today. I love all the speeches. So creative, so funny. I was lucky enough to come out second place in the Humorous Speech Contest and first place in the division for evaluation. I have had a wonderful time and I know everybody else did. We want to invite you to our district contest November 3rd. Please be there to watch who is the top. So good to have you here and tell me, how are you feeling about winning runner-up for the evaluation contest? Thank you so much, Linda. It's lovely to go ahead and have the opportunity to do evaluation. That's one of the really important parts of the Toastmasters program. So being a runner-up feels great because it's definitely stiff competition. It was really stiff competition. And so tell me, if you will, what you think the real strength of what you presented today. I actually really love doing evaluation because I feel that it is so important and I always try to preview my evaluations so that the audience can also get important stuff out of what I'm saying. The evaluation is not just for the speaker and the evaluator, it's really for the whole club or whoever's in attendance. Thank you so much and would you please just tell us before you leave today, where are you from? What is your club and whom are you representing? I'm with Club OCCN, Orange County Communicators Network in Costa Mesa. Thank you so much for being here today and congratulations. Thank you. Good morning, Wendy. Congratulations on such a great win. I would like you to tell me first what club you're representing. I represent Smedley Club One. Smedley Club One. And I'd also like to know what your background is that so beautifully qualified you for what you did today in your win. I am a senior trainer at a healthcare company, so I'm fortunate that I get to get up every day in front of people and practice the skills of public speaking. It really shows, Wendy. And I would like to know how are you feeling right now that you just won this contest? I feel great. I feel so blessed and so happy. I've had so many great mentors and I think that they have played the biggest role in my life in making me more of a polished speaker. 
definitely I can see that's happening. So tell me, tell me what is the impact has been on, in terms of your mentors. What has that meant to you? I think my mentors have really stretched me to where they evaluate me personally and they tell me what I'm doing well and what I'm not doing well and they support me so much and give me that great feedback that I'm constantly taking that in, taking it to heart and every time I get up there in front of people, whether it's at work or in Toastmasters, I remember that and it makes me feel good that they have taken the time for me. So now I'd like to take the time for other people as well. And thank you so much. And you are doing really a great job of following through and integrating and then educating what you've been learning. And so you're taking away from this to the, what are you going to do for the next level? I think I'm just going to keep on improving and practicing and seeking out opinions and making sure that I work on my diction and my presence. And hopefully I'll, I'll succeed. Honey, you've already succeeded. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you. you decided to attend the Founders District Fall Conference on November 3rd at the Sheraton Hotel in Cerritos. That's a smart move. To keep making smart moves, here are the top five do's and don'ts. Do arrive at the conference early. Well, don't arrive too early at 3 a.m. because we'll still all be in bed. Recommended arrival time is 8 o'clock. Sharp. Well, you'll have plenty of time to register, check the opportunity drawing prizes, and find the best seat in the house. Do attend the business meeting, which starts promptly at 1045. Now, don't make an origami swan out of your ballot. And if there's an empty chair on the stage, don't sit in it or else you'll totally get yelled at by Clint Eastwood. Wherever you sit, you'll definitely see how the business of the district is conducted. Do buy your opportunity drawing tickets early. Yes, but don't put all your tickets in the cup for just one prize. Sure, you'll increase your odds, but do you really want to spend $30 on a copy of Al Gore's Nobel Prize acceptance speech? Didn't he invent the internet? <laughs> he surely did. <laughs> put your tickets into the drawing cups well before high noon. The winning tickets will be drawn while everyone is watching our keynote speaker, Roberta Perry. And don't sit at the past district governor's luncheon table. Well, unless you're a past district governor. But do sit at any of the other tables. The food's better. Okay, actually, the food's the same. But you can stroll by the past district governor's table and ask for their autographs. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> do attend your choice of the afternoon workshops. Yes, you'll learn about capturing oral history by Cora Granada, PhD. Or you will learn about creative inspiration by Craig Cowson, grandson of the famous animation artist Chuck Jones. Just don't ask him who's smarter, Bugs Bunny or the Roadrunner. And finally, don't look directly in the eyes of the idol. Uh, isn't that the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland? Oh, you're right. I keep getting those two <laughs> mixed up. Well, anyway, do follow these few simple tips, and I guarantee that you will enjoy the conference. If you don't follow these tips, you'll still enjoy the conference, and you'll meet and greet new and old friends. And we, we will, will see, see you at the Founders District, District Fall Conference. Conference. So uh, you agree with me that Bugs Bunny is superior to No, the Roadrunner's road better. I always thought the Bugs Bunny was more clever than Oh, no, the Roadrunner never got caught. Yeah, yeah, there's something to be caught, I have to say. That's right, <laughs> <laughs>